since we have you now on the microphone, um, the German government has been among the first to start pouring money, tons of money, into into the airline industry. If if, if my my information is correct, only four billion just for Lufthansa, and there are other no, airlines. It's actually, it's actually nine billion. Oh, nine billion. Okay, yes. so you see, I, I I was too short then. And, <laughs> no. So how how do, how how do you see not not just for the from the German perspective but from a more European one all this issue of government assistance uh, state aids and so on mm -hmm. yeah um, let me just start with um, these different measures that actually the German government um, had issued to to help companies not only airlines but um, one is short time allowance which was anyway a law but also had been um, broadened the application now, which um, whereby the state pays a certain part of the employee's wages. So in order to um, prohibit or, or to protect the workers so that they will not be laid off. And, and that is one government measure. Then they also defer tax payments and uh, reduce tax prepayments and um, uh, were loosening the rules of enforcement. Then there is also an ongoing discussion on the, especially the air passenger tax, uh, which was just this year, beginning of this year heavily increased. And um, but uh, yeah, that is still a, a discussion. And two other issues: there was also a law enforced that uh, companies that have become illiquid just due to the COVID-19 pandemic, do not have to file for insolvency. Um, and this is um, until 30th of December 2020, but could be even prolonged until 31st of March 2021. And yeah, and then the last thing is the liquidity support, um, which are mainly government loans um, by the KFW Bank. Or, or especially, um, um, and that has been provided, I want to say, for, for TUI, which is a big um, um, travel organization, which, oh, now my telephone is ringing. I hope you don't hear it. <laughs> um, and also has an airline. They received a 1.8 billion, or it was approved, government loan. Then also Condor, which is another German airline, which was already in insolvency proceedings, uh, but under the so-called protective shield proceeding, which means a restructuring. And there were really good, um, uh, good prognose for, for getting out of that at the beginning of the year, because as, as you may know, um, the, the mother company from Polish airline lot wanted to invest to Condor, but due to the corona pandemic, they somehow got out of the deal, whether it was rightfully or not, will be discussed. Um, and, um, and and they, they had received already last year alone um, about 300 million and they could not repay this loan, which was due on on 15th of April, and so they got another loan of 550 million <laughs> from the government, um, which uh, uh, so in order to to refinance also this first one loan, and then there is this big discussion with Lufthansa, um, and. Uh, I have to also, in this context, I want to state the, that the European Commission had announced on 19th of March already a temporary framework to state aid measures in order to loosen the requirements. And uh, so far, the European Commission approved all government aid programs, which um, from the member states, which are about 1.9 trillion euros, I've read, and the, the most part went to, to Germany so far, 52%. And this, um, in this temporary framework, the beneficiaries and member states are required to develop an exit strategy because it shall not be a permanent um, state-owned airline or a company. 
um, so that they should exit after six years if it is a publicly listed company or seven years for, for other companies. And also until 75% of the recapitalization is redeemed, there is a strictly a limitation on remuneration for the management, including a ban on bonus payments. So that should give an incentive of, of yeah, that, that it's really only a temporary measure, this, this state involvement. And also in these um, EU framework, there is, uh, it states that the beneficiaries shall be transparent on the use of the government aid and also should lay down how they um, uh, apply that to become, uh, to, to link that to green and digital uh, transformation. And to become greener is, as you all know, the big discussion anyway. And, and that is also, I think, the most important part why Lufthansa has not yet received the government loan, um, because yeah, Lufthansa, uh, I think, understandably, does not want to have government loan and also government intake or involvement and uh, want to limit that. And on the other side, there, especially our Green Party, is very much lobbying that if the government provides the aid, they should also um, um, yeah, um, link that to, to certain promises from the airline how they become greener. For example, they also said Air France or France did it the right way because I think they got 7 billion and um, it was connected to the obligation to reduce carbon emissions on mid and long haul flights until 2030 by 50% and on inner country flights uh, also by 50% already until 2024. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, Christina, let me let me interject because we so, sorry for the interruption, but we received two questions. Okay, uh, which I'm one is specifically targeted to you, uh, but I can, I would extend this to to all the panelists, and the other one is for all the panelists uh, about this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, one participant is asking us if we're aware whether airports have received state aid throughout Europe, because of course airports have also been hit. But this would be question number one. And the other one, and the second question comes from uh, our very much esteemed colleague, Gonzalo Yelpo in Uruguay. Who, uh, Gonzalo, I don't know what time it is in your country, but certainly early. So but he's taken the time to ask us why are the governments in Europe giving state aid to legacy carriers like Air France, Iberia, Lufthansa, etc., plus payroll schemes, plus tax and airport breaks on charges? Uh, should not should the, these state aids not be extended to the privately owned airlines? Uh, Gonzalo, I should add that. Um, uh, as Christina just explained, Condor and some other private airlines have received this. But for example, in the UK, and maybe Ben and Jonathan, you want to comment on this. Uh, I read the other day that Ryanair has received some funds from the British government. But, well, that's yes. interesting. Yes, so actually, um, it's obviously it's an evolving picture, but um, um, to our knowledge, um, the, the uh, COVID corporate finance fund uh, emergency liquidity facility available um, backed by the UK government isn't just for UK companies. I mean, it's, it's intended to be for UK companies, companies with significant employment in the UK, firms, companies with their headquarters in the UK. It also will consider applications from companies that generate significant revenue in the UK, uh, have a large number of customers in the UK, or have operating sites in the UK. So it's not strictly UK only. And we've seen some examples. I think Wizz Air has, has, has been granted um, an allocation of, of funds. Jonathan will know the quantity, I expect. But um, so th that's one thing. So our 
And the other thing which is interesting to know, which hooks on to Christine's point about the environment, I think, is that uh, my understanding is that the CCFF, the COVID Corporate Finance Facility, um, um, is not linked in any way to environmental targets or performance. And, th and that's been commented on by the national press. So in a nutshell, in the UK, no state aid, formal state aid has been talked about seriously in terms of uh, I, you know, British Airways or um, UK big, um, UK big, big airlines, and it's it's not anticipated actually. But instead, there will be aid available for those that, that, that need it and have viable businesses to to to, to, to take it responsibly. Right. That's the UK. Yeah, sorry, John. Sorry. Oh, I mean, um, Ryanair did accept uh, six hundred million pounds uh, in state aid. I think a couple of days ago, despite. Michael O'Leary being, having previously been quite critical about um, state aid, so a bit of a, a flip-flop potentially there. And I think the point that Christine raised uh, in relation to Air France was a comment from the Minister of Finance in, in Paris, who said that the seven billion given to Air, fin Air France should be used to make it become one of the world's greenest airlines. So they're clearly latching on to the Onto the, um, onto the potential for, to use this situation in order to make aviation a more respons environmentally responsible industry. And certainly there's call from, you know, perhaps no surprises here, but from the likes of Greenpeace to say, well, look, it's okay to give state aid um, to these airlines, but what about tying it to some form of environmental obligations? Um, whereas, you know, for example, the, air, the emissions for Ryan, I think it was either Ryanair or EasyJet had increased so significantly between 2018 to 2019, that there's no seemingly no compliance with their environmental obligations, that this is see, being seen as perhaps the stick to actually force airlines to, to look at the way in which they, you know, their environmental responsibilities, which I think is a, a really, will become a much bigger point as, um, as this continues. Right. Anybody aware of any Assistance having been given to airports. This was one of the questions. Yeah, I, I'm not aware, but I, I know that they are also that they somehow or I read something that they felt forgotten about this whole scheme. I mean, in Germany, it is really state aid also not only, as I mentioned, um, the legacy carrier, but um, to all companies which um, yeah have a significance in life whatever that means and I think um, but uh, uh, but I read about that that the airports also want some government aid at least in Germany in, uh, in our system the, the uh, support for the employees is of course open also to airport but as to many other uh, air, air non related uh, enterprises whilst the, 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 support, the financial support so far has been devoted mostly to the former flag carrier and uh, also to other carrier provided certain requirements are met. And it is, as I said, of today, the new decree which has uh, provided as a, a requirement for benefiting of these uh, funds the application by the requesting airline of the uh, national collective agreement with the minimum wages uh, for the employees. So this is a condition for applying for uh, the uh, support, the financial support uh, granted, uh, as I said today. Apparently, there is no provision uh, related specifically to airport, it is apart from the one uh, for the employees, for the special funds for employees. Yeah, so from the UK, Sergi, we're not aware of any airports having uh, been awarded any funds, but looking at the, at the kind of pricing of the debt, um, depend, it varies in the UK depending on how uh, the credit rating is of the applicant. So if you're A1, which very few businesses are these days, you get it at 20 basis points. Um, you know, uh, at A2, it's 40, and A3, um, which is... Uh, you know, for the, for the lower credit rates, it is 60 basis points. So it could be that it's not competitive, but that would be uh, beyond my experience level in terms of what's competitive in the market at the moment across various funding liquidity sources.